If we could have roll call, please. Clark? Here. Fish? Here. Hausman? Here. Parsons? Here. Wakefield? Here. Mayor Beasley? Thank you. We have a quorum. We'll proceed to approval of the agenda. We are taking off the fireworks ordinance under police report 10A. Does anyone else have any corrections or additions to the agenda? Okay, we have a motion by Wakefield, second by Houseman to approve the agenda as amended. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Moving on to approval of the minutes for July 26th, special meeting, August 2nd, briefing meeting, August 6th, regular meeting, and August 13th, special meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Hausman, second by Clark to approve the minutes as presented. Any discussion? No, Thank you. no discussion? Okay. No discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved. Moving on to claims, page 18 through 20. Does anyone have any questions on the claims? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve those. So moved. Motion by Parsons, second by Hausman to approve the claims. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, moving on. All right, uh, we are now moving to visitors and timed items. For anyone in the audience, I would like to address the council. You have five minutes, and if you're interested, come up to the to the lectern and state your name and your address. My name is Stan Tyree. I live at 209 West Hackberry Street. Um, I'm just here to talk about the council um, appointment for Ward 1. Um, I know I've sent all you guys letters about my feelings on um, Spencer being on the council. I think he would make a good addition, and I do think that the um, citizens spoke during the election when it was a very close tie <coughs> between Barb Fish and Spencer. So I hope you take that into consideration. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Thank Dan. You. Thanks, Dan. <clears throat> If you push the button, please. Push the purple button. There you go. Okay. My name is Tom Airy. I live at 1609 Locust Avenue. I, too, would like to voice my support of uh, Spencer Shank for the replacement position in Ward 1. When, when he was in the running this spring, he uh, impressed me as a person who has uh, energy and the willingness to commit to the responsibilities <laughs> that uh, go along with being on the Brandon City Council. I, uh, I still feel this way, and I, I would like to add my support and hope that he is given the appropriate consideration for uh, filling that position. Yep. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else to address any other issue for the council tonight? Okay. Hearing none, we're going to move on to appointment of council replacement for Ward 1. So we do a motion. Yep. Uh, a motion and a second to nominate one of the two candidates. If I could, I had a question for each of them, if I could. Um, I'm just curious today, both um, Spencer and Brett, if you can answer it. Um, if someone were to ask you today, would you recommend living in Brandon? Absolutely. I've been here 13 years. Thank you. So from this seat, it, it can be very challenging. I'm sure that uh, everyone kind of wonders what happens when, when you sit on a council and where your mind goes. And, you know, it's really not about what, what my personal opinion is um, or, you know, what, what my heart tells me to do. The, the whole point of, of being in this seat is, is to 
do that of, of which the residents have asked me to do. Um, I've had several residents reach out to me on this topic specifically, um, and a few of you are here tonight, and I appreciate seeing you here tonight. Um, it was a very um, split decision um, from the standpoint of, you know, when I look at emails, just emails alone, not including Facebook messages or, or phone calls or text messages, it was five to one. Um, and, you know, to me, that's not a huge turnout, but it's something. Um, and then tonight, standing at the podium, uh, again, we had uh, a few. And, you know, the, the role of, of this seat and the seat that I sit in, it's, it's to try and, and do the will of the people. And, and that's really what drives me and, and holds me accountable is, is that we've had appointments in the past, and that necessarily hasn't come been what the appointment was. Um, you know, there's been appointments where there was an overwhelming majority on even a poll by our local newspaper, which which uh, was kind of interesting. And that wasn't the way that the council went, which was unfortunate. Um, but we just had an election, and in that election, there was a, a pretty good turnout, actually one of the best uh, in history. Uh, I think it was even called out um, as one of the best. So, you know, based on that, um, at that time, there was... A, one of the candidates um, that was on the ballot and received a lot of uh, energy from the public. And that person also took the energy to go out and get 50 signatures to get on that ballot, at least 50. Um, and I did the same when I ran for this position. And, and that says a lot. It's, it's somebody that's engaged and willing to take that effort. Uh, the other uh, aspect of this and a lot of the feedback that the residents have given is they're looking for somebody that has expertise in some of the biggest challenges that Brandon has today. And we all know that water is a challenge that we're working through. And in this case, um, Spencer Shank happens to be an expert in that field when it comes to streets and an underground. Um, so with that, and based on all of the um, residents support and the, the feedback that I received from the residents and and several of those emails were emailed to, to all the council, and I appreciate the residents taking the time to do that. Uh, I would make a motion for Spencer Shank to fill this position. We have a motion for Spencer to fill the position. Is there a second? Um, I, I just have a few words. And Spencer, like, like I said the other day, I appreciate your tenacity. You are, you are somebody that really goes after what you want. However, I have a problem with when Chuck asked the question, you hesitated on having people move to Brandon. Brandon is a beautiful community. You know, all of us up here want to represent to the best of our ability what a beautiful community it is. And that's why when you, if you had said yes, maybe it would have changed my mind, I'm not sure. But when you hesitated, I have a problem with that. Even though we have so-called water issues, you know, what we're working through. We had sewer issues that we worked through. We have street issues that we worked through. We can't just be one on one agenda. This is a city of 10,000 people. We have to be for the people, all the people, and not just water. So for that, I can't make a second on it, and I have to go with Brett. Again, calling for a second on the motion. Hearing no second, the motion dies. We will entertain another motion if there is one. I'll make a motion for Brett Bastion. I have a motion for Brett. Is there a second? Second. I have a second for Brett. I have a motion for Brett from Hausman, a second from Parsons. Discussion, please. A quick clarity question. With Mayor Beasley's last day being Wednesday, can we actually do an appointment in his absence? Yeah, it's actually not an appointment by the mayor. This is to fill a vacancy, so the appointment motion is by the council. I'll just make a quick comment too on the candidates. I think that they're both stellar candidates and we're really blessed to have the opportunity to have two really good solid candidates. Um, for me it kind of comes down to comparing this to an interview that, that you're applying for and I, I saw Brett just really go to town making those connections asking for those opportunities to sit down and visit with the council and with the staff and with the department heads and I, I just didn't get the feel from from Spencer that 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 passion was there I 
I uh, reached out to a lot of, of um, the group and, and didn't hear that those contacts were made. Um, with regards to the water, I feel like you're a great, great asset to help Brandon get through the water issue, but the Water Development Committee is really the place where that happens. That's from my experience where all of the movement has come from. Um, I haven't seen anything not approved by council that the Water Development Committee has put forward. So I, I would love to see you get engaged there where you could make a difference on what you're really passionate about. But you can, you can go, um, I go every time and, and they allow me to engage and participate. I, I don't know if that's, yeah. yeah. So one of the things that drove me to my decision is doing background checks, not background checks, just looking into people and, and seeing who they are and, and understanding them. And transparency is a big thing for me. And um, I, Facebook snoop. I mean, who doesn't these days, right? You, you hop on Facebook, you, you see what's going on with somebody, you see who their friends are. And, and I did that early on. And it kind of started to bother me a little bit. So I did some digging and asking of people that have been in, in the community for a while. And there's a connection with Brett Bashton and some of the doctors that formed the organization TB and J. And they're good friends and that's fine. Um, but at the same point, it's more of the same. And the residents that reached out to me asked several times for change and that's a big part of it is we're here to do the job of the residents and I know based on the emails that I received that those emails were also received by the rest of the council and with that said uh, I'm not changing my stance the residents reached out and said the way that the vote should be And I've had residents reach out from both sides. So um, in my case, it was not just one-sided. So that is driving my decision. So do we have more discussion? All right. Appointing Brett Bastian for Ward 1 Council Replacement for, let me um, make this really clear, for eight months. And so if someone does not get the position that they would like, there's another election in April next year. So this is for eight months only. So call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Again, as I stated, that is a position that is only for eight months. Whoever's interested, it will be up again in April and run again. Um, now we are going to move on to elect council president. So right now I am serving, I am the vice president. Blaine was the president. Blaine has resigned because he has moved out of town. Um, unfortunately, we're going to be accepting the mayor's resignation here in a bit, and so that's why I'm up here at the moment. The sooner I can get out of this role, the better with me. Okay? 
Uh, I forget my Robert's <laughs> Rules of Order. So Lisa, please keep me, uh, you know, in line. I, you know, it's been a long time since I was a Toastmaster. So anyway, uh, moving on to Council President, I'm assuming we need a motion for that. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong. We need a motion for the President and Vice President. I would make a motion that um, we appoint Barb to be the council president and Joe to be the vice president. Now that train run, running down the track, <laughs> boy. <laughs> okay, we have a motion for Barb Fish to be the president, um, and that was by Parsons, a second by Clark. For Joe Hausman to be vice president, any discussion? Uh, Barb and I vote then, since we're in it. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Again, this is something that's quite unusual. Rarely does the vice president run the meeting. Once in a while, the president does, but um, so pretty unusual. We'll get that mayor in here, and that'll we'll take care of that issue. Okay, so let's call the question. And all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. Wakefield abstains. All right. Motion carried. By our rules of order, you can't abstain unless there's a conflict. So. If you have a conflict, you can abstain, but otherwise you have to vote yes or no by our rules. Okay. So, all right, moving on. Um, it's with a lot of regret that we're accepting uh, Mayor Beasley's resignation tonight. That is on page 21. He has served us for 15 years. Um, through a lot of tumultuous times, we had the uh, ambulance, um, the, railroad. the railroad, the sewer, the water, a lot, of, a lot of tough positions for him to be in, and he is a volunteer. I think sometimes that gets forgotten in the hustle and bustle of our lives. So we want to thank him for his service, um, and I guess I will need a motion to accept that. Please, please include in your motion uh, the date of August twenty second, two thousand eighteen, as indicated in Mayor Beasley's letter of resignation, as his last day. I just want to thank the mayor for all his years of service. He has done this city wonderfully, and I'm proud that he's been our mayor. And I don't know if we've clarified, but he also is a teacher, and tonight there's open houses, and that is the reason that he's not here is because he's attending the uh, high school, uh, elementary school open houses that he needs to for his teaching position. With regret, we, are, we have a motion to accept um, the resignation of Mayor Larry Beasley after 15 years of dedicated service. That motion was made by Parson, seconded by Clark. Any more discussion? So by effectively accepting it on August 22nd, that locks us out from the ability to create an ordinance to allow this to go to public vote for the replacement. I just want to make sure that everyone's clear. And I would tell you that I did ask Mayor Beasley if he was willing to extend his resignation date to uh, allow for that, Mr. Wakefield, and he said he is not. Um, he wanted his resignation to be effective the 22nd, and I explained the process to him. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you, Mayor Beasley, for your years of service, and we'll be seeing we'll be seeing him around, yeah. hopefully on the golf course, if no place else. Okay, moving on to <laughs> now we have to schedule a. a to replace the mayor. Well, this is the process we've used in the past for the council vacancies, except the resignation, uh, two notices in the paper, uh, deadline of September 10th to submit the expression of interest form, uh, informal meet the candidate form at the September 13th briefing meeting. 
with an appointment to take place at the set regular meeting on September 17th, and then that person would serve until May 6th. So yes, again, uh, this is a short-term appointment. Again, um, in April, there will be an election. That's a citywide election. Anyone can apply to run for that position. Um, it's not based on ward, so anyone that's interested. I do Other, think... Let me just interject two different things. One is you need to be a resident three months in the city of Brandon to be able to hold the position. And secondly, there's no legal requirement to do the advertisement. It's something that historically we've done, a publication to get the word out. And um, so if the council didn't want to do the publication, we don't have to do the publication, but it's a, a practice we've been doing. So that's up to you how you want to run that. Well, due to a scheduling conflict, I'd actually like to push this back. And so we would appoint the mayor October 1st instead of September 17th because of the two of us would be gone on the 13th. So my recommendation is we push this back. We appoint the mayor on October 1st. I would be supportive of that because I just realized I'm gone on the 13th. I think we really need to have all the council here when we're making this appointment, okay? So we can push that back. Do we have to do anything special? No, you're just supposed to make the appointment as promptly or reasonably as you're able to. So if that's in your discretion reasonable, that's fine. So you need to do anything? No, this was just for information unless you wanted to change it somehow. You would still meet the candidates on the 13th. Leave the schedule as is, or are we going to move everything back? Well, we'll leave, the, we'll leave the publications the same and the deadline we could extend, and then if you wanted to meet the candidates, um, I don't have the calendar in front of me, the Thursday briefing meeting prior to the October 1st meeting would be what day? Um, that 27th. would be the 27th. And then that would be the meet the candidates on September that? 27th. Can you hear that? Can we amend that to the 26th? And we have a special meeting on the 26th to meet the candidates. Sure. I know I'm asking a lot, but I apologize. But. I just think that it'd be good to have a deadline set, whether it's the proposed deadline or moving that back. Um, I think it's good to have a deadline set so you can do some background checks and um, get prepared for your meeting of the candidates and interviews. Okay, so I'm going to request. Wednesday, September 26th, we meet the candidates with a special meeting, and Monday, October 1st, we appoint the mayor, if that's okay with everybody. If, if you want to, you can formalize that in a motion. Just okay. And then I, I would appreciate still having a deadline to express their interest, the form oh, be submitted oh, by whatever sorry. date that is, but I think it'd be good to have that. 17th. Okay, so... All right, so my motion is going to be this. <laughs> Again, um, we'll make the deadline September 17th for, uh, for people to submit expression of interest form, which is from the public. And then Wednesday, September 26th, special meeting to meet them at like 6 o'clock. And then Monday, October 1st, take action with appointing of the new mayor. And that's my motion. I'll second. I'll second. Okay, so we have a, a motion to change the timeline around a bit to make sure that all of our um, council members are here. So the expression of interest form is due by September 17th. We will meet the candidates on the 26th at 6 p.m. for all those that are interested, and that's just a brief, um, you tell us why brief meeting you tell us why you're interested we ask some questions um, um, very informal kind of process and then at our October 1st meeting we will appoint and again that is a council appointment as a council appointment so we have a motion on record with us let's see who made the motion I did and bat and Brett second. okay motion motion by Hausman second by Bastion for that motion any discussion Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that's our new schedule. And then I don't think we didn't know, need a motion, but if you can give direction to the administrative, would you like it published consistent with our practice? Okay. Yeah.
moving on to uh, committee assignments under council. This one I'd like to slide over to the committees that Blaine had, the police and capital projects, and I would voluntarily stay on personnel. So that would leave Brett with streets, and he could choose his second um, committee as he wanted because we wouldn't have quorum on any of those, which he probably needs a little time to digest what those are. Okay. What do we do? Did we vote on the previous motion? Yeah. Well, the, the mayor. No, I mean the schedule. I thought we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, okay. yeah we did. We all said aye. We all aye. So your vice, vice president is acting as the president is acting as the mayor tonight. So, to the extent that's going to need to have you, Ms. Fish, make the change in the appointments. Okay. And that's just. You, you certainly can have the council vote on it, but they're mayoral appointments, so you can have them vote on it and then make the appointment official. Any discussion on Dana's uh, request for changing committees per council members? Okay. Then if not, as acting vice president, I will make that, uh, I don't know what the word is, appointment to those committees. Okay. Okay. Is that all we got to do? Well, then yep. Brett needs to So what would you like? Then you bounce off. Of personnel, which one do you want? Well, when I had asked about this, since we didn't have quorum, I could stay. You can, you, we can have three council members. We yeah. can have three council members come to the committee meeting. We've tried to keep with the new, with the three new committees: personnel, uh, finance, and and um, capital projects. We try to point two as the formal group, but a third is can always show up because it doesn't constitute a quorum. So you could show up, but we would make Brett the official. Okay. 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 Brett, you. Personnel. Oh, okay. Because she wanted capital projects, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Projects. Okay, Brett. So you are now appointed to streets and personnel. Okay, but you are welcome to attend any other meetings, certainly. Okay. All right. Welcome to those committees. Moving on to second reading revisions to chapter 15 of the zoning ordinance and um, for those that don't know planning and zoning has spent hours on this they've worked really hard on this in addition to our representative from CCOG um, and staff so are we looking for a motion so we're looking for a motion to approve the second reading of revisions to Chapter 15 Zoning Ordinance. I'll we'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion from Hausman, second by Wakefield, to approve the revisions to Chapter 15. Any questions, any discussion on it? Um, Council Member Parsons serves on that um, group, so he would be the one to answer some questions or staff. So just as a heads up to everyone, there was some discussion previously about um, play set air in a backyard and it was a double frontage. Uh, this ordinance takes care of that and fixes that. So you still have to fall within your ease, setbacks. your setbacks, uh, but this will take care of the issue of having two front yards basically. So uh, hopefully that'll be a very welcome change if you have questions. As always, the city staff knows the exact specifics. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor of second reading of Ordinance 566, say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Planning and zoning will be thrilled to have that over with. Well, yes, until they start over again. Okay. Page 151 is um, supplemental budget. We have to move some money um, around from different categories. We just need a Correct. motion for that. Correct. Okay. 
I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, we got a motion from Clark, second by Hausman, to approve the changes um, on the supplemental budget. Any questions on those numbers for staff? This is not an unusual thing. We do this occasionally where we have to transfer money. It's like transferring from your savings to your checking. Any questions? Nope. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Christina, you're good to go on that. All right, moving on. Ear conditioning. Hey, Zane. Hey, Zane. Okay, this is uh, the bid we got from uh, Cryer and Blaine uh, to uh, enhance our air conditioning system. As you know, we have issues with that when we have a, a big wedding and it's, it's hot out. Um, basically, they recommend adding two units. They call them three-ton split system, uh, one over the dance floor and then one on the other side of the room where the buffet area is. Um, initially, we are talking about three, but they thought that we could get by with just two. Um, and then if we had to, we could always add another one if we needed it. But, and then below is the, uh, um, the air curtains. Basically, it's a unit that just goes above the doors because that's basically our biggest issue is when we have a wedding, we have the doors constantly opening and closing and it's impossible to keep the, the cool air in. So, um, that one is 27 or excuse me 2400 and that's for the back deck main door the north door um i guess i would recommend all three doors that we have the the main entrance as well as the uh door to the dance floor um the reason the dance floor one is important is when we tear the dance floor down, we have to take all the tables out and store them so that door is constantly opening and closing. So once you open that door to the dance floor, it's all the cold air again is out. So, and I think that's going to be one of the one of the things that really helps the most is them air curtains. So, so you're proposing three curtains? that's what I would propose, be, um, but. The main entrance also, like when you're down in the pro shop, you can just feel the cool air coming, or excuse me, the warm air coming down. So, um, You know, the other thing we could do, this is just our first bid here. Um, Kerry doesn't have a, a wedding until September 22nd. We do have a couple golf outings up, up top that are going to rent the room and then also a business meeting, but those aren't quite as essential because the doors don't open and close as much. And plus, we're also getting beyond the the hot days of summer so um, I guess what I could do is you know maybe try to rustle up a couple other bids too um, I like if that's that what idea. if that's what the council would want to do so I like the idea of getting another bid or two I mean I'm kind of familiar with what two ton units run and this seems pretty competitive but okay. I wouldn't mind taking a peek at just another competitive okay. bid Would it make sense to try and install the air curtains first to see how much loss we're seeing um, and see if that helps enough that we can make an impact? Well, the thing is, on, you know, you're not going to be able to get a true test now until, you know what I mean, it's a 90 degree day and we're kind of past those days on, you know, so we won't really know how effective it is until next, <laughs> next June or July or so. And you got 250 people, you know, in the room so what's the time limit for install like if we were to go out and get a few more bids what's what like for these guys uh career in berlin what's the time i think time they said they can get it done in a couple two three days oh i mean so you would have to schedule it now and they could get it done next week or do you can schedule it now and they'd be here in two to three i think days. it would be like a week out week out okay right. all right thank you yep. zane and did we have an opportunity to talk to our local um contractors about this like prairie sun or i definitely Brandon. could do it Plumbing, heating. I'd, I'd really like to encourage us to try to do local if we can. Definitely. So, you know, if they have that capability, I'm not sure, but. I would be supportive, as Dana, Dana said, try to get a couple bids, but I wouldn't want to see it take like six months to a year to get them. It took us 
yeah. three months to get this one and the original one right. we talked to. Yeah, we had issues out. getting even somebody out there with uh, the, the company that actually right. installed the units when the clubhouse was built. So, And I know it's not hot now, but if we could get a couple other bids and still get all this done this fall, I, mm -hmm. I think that'd be good. So. I agree. If you can round them up by next council meeting, that'd be great. I think so. Okay, that'd be yep. super. Thanks for doing that, Blaine, for Zane. Yep. Appreciate Okay, anything else for Zane? I think it's a good idea to, to keep on the air curtain path too, uh, Zane. So when you're getting other bids, let's not forget about that. I think that yeah, that's definitely. a lot of value to it, and uh, especially with those doors. And, um, you know, those are relatively inexpensive when you look at the cost of their conditioning units. So. And I agree with that too, Tim. We should do all of this as one package, not just one or the other and, and piece it together. Had something about a tractor? I, I kind of just found out about this this morning. So <laughs> yeah, I, I talked with Kelly Eilers. Um, the council approved the purchase of a 2018 John Deere 4066M tractor at the last meeting. Uh, the delivery date for that tractor is 11 months out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that don't do us much good. Minor detail. So um, the gentleman did, the salesman did indicate that he could get a 2016 John Deere 4066R here in about 10 days for the same price. The 4066R, same horsepower, but it's a step up. In, it, yeah. In, I think he the said model. there's a six year warranty there's on that six also. Six year extended so. warranty on it as well, oh. instead of a two year warranty on the new one. So lease, yep, we could lease it uh, four and a quarter percent for four years, a lease payment. Zane, is that what you and Kelly are Correct. thinking yep. would be the right yep. way to go? Okay. Yeah, Kelly's got seed ordered for the, the fairways, so we do need a tractor to, to help with that. We could lease one if we don't buy one, but... Uh, yeah, it's something that we're going to really start using a lot because we... Mother Nature wasn't very nice to the golf course this year. We have a lot of a lot of bare spots that we want to airify and reseed. So, in our fairways, I would make a motion that we either do we need to amend our prior one or start new. I, I think just a motion to purchase the 2016 John Deere 4066R for the quote prepared by uh, C and B Operations. Okay, uh, all of what he just said, I'll make a motion for thirty-two thousand eight hundred. And I would just add one more uh, comment. The other sense of urgency with all this is we've got a big tournament coming up next. Is it July? Uh, correct. The state uh, match play. So timing on the uh, air fryer then, is that pretty quick lead time too? I think he said that we could start like the first week of September. Okay, good. So tractor here on time. And then that lease payment, it's basically a dollar buyout at the end of the lease. Is that how it works? Okay. And then to be clear, this is a purchase not of a want, it's a purchase of need because our other one can't handle it and is worn out. So the city got its definite dollars out of the last Kubota. So, and then um, I noticed on here it said that uh, they're not really interested in trading in that Kubota. So we'll surplus that then. Is that yeah, the we'll point? Actually, as soon as the new one comes in. Kelly told me that they would give us 2000 I believe, for it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what the Kubota market's like these days. But we can surplus it out just as easy. Okay, so we have a motion to purchase a 2016 4066R John Deere for the same dollar amount of 32800 any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, you got a new tractor again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly will be happy. <laughs> okay. So does that cover the financing, the tractor, and the, is that all in there? No, we'll, no, we'll get no? the written lease agreement for the next council meeting. We don't have that yet. 
maybe just clarification on do you want to just borrow the for the John Deere tractor or do you want to look at borrowing for the air fire or pay cash on the air fire um, First National Bank can do a 4.48% Wells Fargo is at 6.15% um, Kelly say on this youth one John Deere has four and a quarter yep yeah we can do, tractor. And we can do John Deere at four and a quarter, but that would be for the tractor only. That'd be for the tractor. I'd be fine f financing both, but again, if staff okay. has a different recommendation. No, that's fine. We'll we'll get the lease documents ready for the next council meeting. We have uh, deferred uh, the fireworks to another agenda, so we're going to move past that. Anything else from police chief? anything else golf oh anything else golf sorry Chuck you got no. anything else okay all right chief you're on okay I've been harassing kids lately telling them that uh, school starts on Wednesday um, reminding them to make sure their backpacks are ready but I would like to uh, push out that uh, with school starting on Wednesday we're going to be seeing the flashing lights again in the school zone so if you can spread that to your family friends and and others um, I'll try to have Christina put that on the uh, Facebook page and uh, we will have a presence um, our officers will be working that fairly heavily for as long as it takes but just a reminder to slow down 15 miles an hour on split rack and on Holly and on Sue uh, while kids are going to school and on the back side of uh, Brandon Elementary also a lot of people forget that it's not just Holly it's First Avenue and so that's all I've got uh, the, the car is in the uh, process of switching over the Tahoe to the pickup truck so that started today and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing the uh, uh, the new vehicle out on the street within the next week or so Thank you, Chief. And can you give an update on the vandalism that happened Saturday night? The vandalism. Well, the, the theft, the stealing. The car, the, the, the larcenies. Lar sorry, vandalism, well, larceny. Sorry, well, I got they're it. not the same. Oh, I'm they're, so sorry. I don't know my terminology. They're not the same. We, uh, uh, we have, have some postings out there, and um, we don't have the person identified yet. But uh, we are hoping that someone recognizes who this person was. And pretty good video. Um, if anybody else has any video, we would hope that they would uh, uh, turn that in. But um, we, haven't, we haven't gotten that definitive tip yet. I didn't recognize her. My officers didn't recognize her. But uh, we're hoping. I, I didn't hear what happened, but I know it's on Facebook. But I don't have any details. Yeah, we had a number of, uh, I think, six, seven, eight. Uh, car hoppings again um, and in in the video you can see the uh, the lady the young lady coming up between two vehicles uh, she checked the one on her left that one was locked the one on the right wasn't locked she went in and and took some articles so uh, those were the vehicles that were being entered everybody uh, once again I have to throw out the reminder that it it does help if people lock their doors um, I was going through some reports yesterday or today on uh, car thefts in, in Sioux Falls. Fortunately, they were all pretty much in Sioux Falls, and uh, a number of them, the cars were unlocked. One person did take the, the keys out of the ignition and then set it on the driver's seat where it could be easily found. And so it, it's a simple, simple thing of protecting yourself. And I would uh, I would also encourage when people pull into the gas station to run in and and uh, grab a beverage or a coke or a donut in the morning that they turn off the vehicle take the keys with them and uh, go inside and I don't care if it's 10 below uh, that's a it's a viable target and even though we're in Brandon uh, that kind of stuff does happen in in smaller communities too it's not just Sioux Falls so that's my lesson All right, anything else under police? Oh, nope. all right. Moving on. You know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moving on to Park and Rec. 
The work report is on page 157. Devin and his crew have been busy. So on this, I noticed that they're mowing vacant lots. Is that something that the city is sending a bill for, or can you give us an update on that, please? We do. Um, if we get a complaint for tall grass and weeds, we'll notify the property owner, give them a deadline. If it's not done, uh, we then send the parks crew out to mow it, and then we send the bill to the property owner. And if it remains unpaid, it will be assessed against the property. Um, reviewing the work report, I was dismayed to see that there was vandalism at our new Aspen restrooms. Um, and I think that's really unfortunate, and I hope that um, if anyone knows of who has caused that problem, to report it, because it's not a simple matter of just painting over it. Um, you have to do more than that. So um, that's a pretty expensive facility, brand new. So that was unfor really unfortunate. Um, one thing that the park board talked about um, was a splash pad RFP. So. Um, one of the things that we've been talking about doing for quite some time is um, looking at putting in a splash pad. I don't know if it would be by the pool or somewhere else. That's why we want to do an RFP to see what um, companies might come up with for ideas. We think it would be a nice enhancement for, for Brandon. Of course, it's quite expensive, so um, we would probably have to create an ordinance where we can stockpile some money that's used specifically for uh, capital projects and it has to be spent within five years um, otherwise our park budget does not allow us uh, enough flexibility to pay for a splash pad all at one time so if the council is willing we would like to put out the RFP see what comes back Tammy will be um, involved with that and um, our park board committee so would I need to make a motion for that, Brian? Okay. So I would make a motion that we just put out an RFP for the splash pad. We're not making any commitments at this time. No, go ahead. Okay. So we have a motion by Fish, second by Clark, for a splash pad RFP coming out of the Park and Rec Recreation Committee recommendations. Any discussion? So, Barb, I want to thank you for taking the effort on this. This is something that other residents have, have reached out to me and asked, and I think it's uh, really good to see this coming through. So, um, you know, I think it's also really uh, important that uh, at this point there's no cost, which is great, you know, so we can, uh, you know, get a pulse of what, what the true cost is going to be and then, uh, you know, look at it. And I, I did notice in the RFP that it talked a little bit about integrating it into our pool, which is exciting to see the potential uh, there. So I look forward to seeing what uh, everyone has to say. So thank you, Barb, for spearheading that. Other discussion? Okay. All right. So all in favor of putting out a splash pet RFP, say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. We're going to move ahead with that. Tammy, I'll have you, if uh, we can coordinate with John on that, John Jacobson, he's our park board president. I'll talk to you about it, okay? To continue my report on park board, the other thing we talked about, you know, we really want to get a second entrance to Aspen Park. And we keep trying to, you know, look for ideas of how we can do that. And so I just want the council to be made aware that we're still looking at that. Um, if it's feasible, we have some lots up by Highway 11. I don't know if we can pop out on a Highway 11. Uh, that's going to be a state issue. So we are still pursuing that. And I think that was the gist. Other than that, uh, we talked about the budget. And uh, one of our committee members will be here Thursday to present the park board budget to you all so that you can ask any questions, okay? That's all I have for park. Do you have anything? No, okay. All right, moving on to administrative. The next two items, the city engineer soliciting engineering proposals and social media policy. Um, Tammy's still working on the engineering proposal policy and I've reached out to six communities in South Dakota, our size, ranging from Vermilion, Yankton, Huron, Mitchell, Spearfish. I'm missing somebody. Anyway, for their social media policies as well as A2S uh, is shipping down some of their proposals. So when we get those, we'll gather them together and, and present those to the council. 
Okay, so what about the city engineer soliciting engineering Tammy's, proposals? Tammy's still working She's on working on that. She decided to go fishing last week. At those two things will circle back on on a later agenda. All right, going on to TIF number four proposal resolution eight dash eighteen. <laughs> this would create this would create a new TIF district, um, TIF district number four, which would encompass the south fifty acres of the Rolvang Industrial Park. This is to help pay for um, the infrastructure that's being installed, the water, the sewer, the street, um, et cetera. What this does is freezes the base taxes paid on the parcel, so the county, the, the city, and the school district will get uh, the property taxes they're currently receiving on the parcel. Any, any increase in property taxes due to the construction of improvements such as buildings would then come to the city as the increment we would then turn around and pay that to the development foundation for the costs incurred to install the infrastructure. That's kind of it in a nutshell. So we're not losing any. No, we're, we're not, not losing any anything. Money. And actually, in, in this instance, it works out very nice. The, the development foundation is, is borrowing the money, paying for it, so they are assuming the risk if uh, it doesn't cash flow. I would just add, Barb, just so everybody knows, I'm the um, Secretary of Treasurer for the Development Foundation, but I do plan to vote tonight. Lisa, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because there is no personal gain that I have from this. Yeah, so I'm So we've got a motion by Hausman, second by Bastion, to approve the TIF district number four proposal discussion. Okay, no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Create some more jobs, Chuck. Okay. Um, committee meeting minutes, you want to handle that, Chuck? Um, kind of a recap of what we did at the last meeting and then I've reached out to Brian and Tammy uh, Barb you and I have been attending these committee meetings we've had a couple I guess what I'd like to do is sit down with Brian and Tammy and just discuss how we'd like to respond to the committee so that would be the hopefully do that at the next meeting maybe in the next couple weeks sale of surplus property at 616 South Palmer Drive. Yep, uh, these are the, this is the east lot on the cul-de-sac of Palmer Drive, um, just north of Aspen, vacant lot that we acquired a couple years ago in a, in a settlement. Uh, the property owner, Ryan Bellaney at 612 South Palmer, has submitted a bid for $2,500 to purchase the north 20 feet of the property at 616 South Palmer. If the council wants to award that bid or accept that bid, I would make it contingent upon the parcel being incorporated into his current parcel, and the plat has been done for that. Has been done. I would just add too that um, Brian's been taking care of this lot for quite some time. You mean like mowing it? Yes. Both, both of the adjacent property are those two lots take care of it. Okay, motion by Wakefield, second by Clark to accept the bid for 2500 for the surplus property at 616 South Palma Drive and the replatting into one lot. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. okay 
Moving on to streets. We have the maintenance report. Looks like they have been busy. Yeah, what's with the snow? Yeah, he does that to us. So the snow. Come on up, bro. Okay. Annual curb and gutter repair project. Is that what you want to talk about next? That's what I'm here to talk about. We discussed it on Thursday. I was a little uh, unprepared for that. Brian kind of threw me a curveball there. But um, our original bid for the uh, curb and gutters was 34889 through Dave DD Construction. That was actually a little bit lower than what he had bid, or excuse me, a little bit higher than what he had bid, um, roughly $660. My math wasn't so good because uh, Paul kind of left me hanging as the engineer too there, so. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was going to be a little bit higher than what we originally had for the bid, so I just wanted the council to know that it's it's a little bit, but it's still below our budgeted number. We had 45000 budgeted for it, so we're plenty below it. And then our sidewalk stuff came in at about roughly $9,000, which we had $30,000 budgeted for, so we should be plenty good there too. Moving on to stripes. Tammy, you're on. So Raleigh went out and gave me some measurements on those two roads. Thanks, Raleigh. And adding in a turn lane for sandstone is pretty easy striping. But in order to add another lane onto Holly at that intersection is going to be a little bit more work than just striping. Um, if we put in three lanes, 12 foot wide, it does work in there. But it leaves us with shoulders that are less than two feet wide. And I'm not 100% sure what those shoulders are made of as far as base course and how thick the asphalt is right there. So I think it would be taking off part of that shoulder and reconstructing to make those lanes wider and then adding a shoulder on there, which includes some grading work and some reshaping of ditches. Um, with that being said, I think it's going to be over 50000 so it would be a project that we would have to bid. And... I don't have the survey equipment to do it, and we have AutoCAD light, so I wouldn't be able to do some of that grading work. So I guess the question to the council is, would you like me to get a proposal to have this work done? I would say yes. Yeah. In the meantime, can we at least stripe? Sandstone? Uh, Sandstone. So it's so the striping on sandstone is good to go, no impact. Right, and then do that. Holly, we just can't do the turn lane because it's not wide enough. Just want to make sure we're clear. Right, perfect. Yep. So I did have a, a resident from out there reach out to me with a couple of concerns. Um, he was asking for more police presence out there, Chief. Now I know that you have police presence out there because my husband got a warning ticket out there the other night, so you were out there, but. He's, he's asking for more police presence. Um, he's not convinced that um, what we're proposing to do is going to work. The other concern, and again, this is coming from him, do we think um, our traffic counts were accurate because they were done after Timberline was taken offline? And would that have reduced our traffic counts? I didn't have an answer for him on that. I said I would bring it up. I don't know. Boy, I, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't think so because they did project a 2% increase and a 4% increase in both those recommendations, say to add a turn lane there. So. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, you're going to get a proposal? Yes, I can get a proposal. Um, do I have the authority to ask another engineering firm for that? Okay. I would think competitive bids or whatever you need to do, yeah. Okay. 
Do we need a motion for the striping of sandstone, or we can move forward with that? Staff can do that. That'll that'll work. So to be clear, we're going to stripe sandstone design on. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, moving on to Christmas decorations, Joe's favorite topic. Yeah, Favorite flowers. That's oh, my flavor is flowers. That's and right, Lisa. And then decorations. Then decorations. Look, so, looking for at least two council volunteers to help select Christmas decorations for Holly. We purchased them last year for Split Rock. We plan. We've got uh, money budgeted to purchase decorations on Holly. So, Dana and Joe. Okay. Okay, on page 186 is the surplus list. We need to declare this stuff declare surplus. Declare surplus and then it will go on the Sioux Falls auction in September. I'll make a motion to declare all five of these that are up there <laughs> on surplus. Okay, so we have a motion from, I totally lost where we're at. <laughs> Who made the motion? Joe, second by Chuck. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, motion by Hausman, second by Parsons to put the items on the surplus list as noted on page 186. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, Raleigh, grease trap. Okay. Uh, grease trap inspection, there's really not been any uh, advancement in that yet. We're going to have to come up with a letter. Um, to invite the establishments that serve food and maybe their neighbors to come to a meeting um, to be able to discuss what the city is looking at trying to do. And we'll probably have to work that out with Lisa on some of the wording of that. So I'm not an attorney. <laughs> and I think that's a great idea to call in the restaurants in the community to visit with them about what our intention is. Yep, just kind of give them a heads up what's going on and you know what we're what we're trying to do anyway so apartments too or just the I think we'll I think we'll start with the the food serving businesses because in our ordinance book that kind of hits that area but the apartments will be something that'll have to be looked at especially when they have several you know like a fourplex not such a big deal. Aplex, you're getting a little bit more. You get down to the south part of town where there's 16 or 24 apartments in them buildings. That's probably something that'll have to be looked at too. Oh, we could. Yeah, we could. Yep, we could. Yeah, well, six. Well, just to give you a heads up, um, I discussed with Tynewell about our pump and motor, and they're recommending that we go to a 3600 RPM pump and motor, which is a little more accessible, readily available. He said he can typically get that uh, in one to three days. Um, when you go to the 1800 RPM pump and motor, those are usually available within a week or two. So you're talking about days compared to weeks. So I don't have a problem with the 3600 RPM uh, option. The only thing I had the question on was the 1800 <laughs> RPM motor and pump that were just paid, well, the pump was paid for back in February or March of this year just replaced they said that they would warranty what it would cost to replace the shaft 
on the 1800 horsepower uh, pump that we just bought which could be anywhere from 700 to 1500 dollars and they would credit it towards the replacement cost if we went with the 3600 rpm pump and motor so that is where we stand with that uh horsepower the 1800 rpm motor costs twenty six thousand three hundred seventeen dollars and forty one cents and to repair the pump they figured was going to cost around fifteen hundred bucks the 3600 rpm motor cost is fourteen thousand five hundred and fifty dollars where the pump costs roughly thirty eight hundred dollars so you're looking at seventeen thousand roughly eighteen thousand for the thirty six hundred rpm uh, pump and motor before they would give us some type of warranty for the repair otherwise you go the other way <clears throat> excuse me it'd be uh, roughly twenty six thousand I would like to go with the 3600 RPM just because they're more readily available. Mm -hmm. So, did you check and see if that motor is VFD compatible yet? E it is, yes. Perfect. <clears throat> yep. So, that's something that um, being VFD allows us to throttle that in the future if we want to take and control that well so we can slow it down speed it up when we're trying to do blending so thank you for checking into that raleigh and based on that information i would make a motion to move forward purchasing a new well setup pump and motor at 3600 rpm okay we've got a motion by wakefield second by hausman to purchase this 3600 rpm uh, motor for well six any more discussion? Just well set up. What did you say? Well set up. I just want to let you know that the first repairs that were done in March or April were not budgeted, which was a total of a little over fifty thousand. Now with this breakdown, you're looking at another twenty, close to twenty thousand, I suppose. So that was not budgeted, also. So I think we'll be all right in our funds, but that's straining it. Just a quick question, really. I know you had mentioned that you were potentially checking with another outfit as well. Did did they get back to you? I was on the phone with them at six or right before six o'clock this afternoon, and they were in Fargo on an emergency. The gentleman that I had talked to to try and get the pricing. They hopefully will have it to me by tomorrow, so at t early in the morning, if not yet tonight. So. So do we need to amend the motion to say not to exceed and allow him to choose the cheaper price? Yeah. Or? Okay. That'll, that'll work. So you said 18, so if we say not to exceed 20,000, that should be sufficient, and then do due diligence and find us the best deal you can. So amend the motion as such. Okay, whatever Tim just said. <laughs> Got you to say 20,000. And Raleigh has discretion on which way to go. All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. That's just parts. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. this is just parts, so you may, yeah. you may exceed the 20. then just one quick question on that is there any spare parts that we should stock with these being i know shorter lead time but we're going to have something that's more consistent so is a check valve like 500 bucks and we can stock that i mean just not necessarily for tonight but can we think about that if there's any recommended i know you don't have a ton of shop space but just I, stuff that we can maybe look at i did ask about that too tynewell went back in their records all the way back to 1998 the uh, pump motor that is in that well is original so it's been there since 98. Um, the pump itself was replaced in 2010 in, or excuse me, 2008, uh, October 17th, November 17th of 2008. So they've been in there for a while. Um, check valve, we've been replacing that on a, about every three years. Um, this year we didn't do our maintenance because of the 
issues with the water right away so we kind of held off on doing anything with it so if we can if we can continue to do that that's fine I think we'll be all right I can purchase a check valve they're roughly a 10 inch check valve I want to say was like right right around twenty two twenty six hundred dollars so I can get one and put it on the shelf but my problem with that is I don't have the equipment to pull the well so I'm at the mercy of whoever I can get to come pull a well <laughs> so if you'd like I can do that but Moving on to resolution 1018. As we proceed with well number eight, uh, we are planning to finance that with debt, a bond, or a loan of some sort. We will incur some costs prior to that with the testing. What this resolution does, it allows us to reimburse ourselves through that debt issuance uh, for the costs that we incur prior to the issuance of debt. So not to exceed 1.3 million. Second. Motion by Parsons, second by Clark to authorize reimbursement for expenditures on well number eight, not to exceed one point three million. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Then moving on to eleven eighteen. That is the same uh, same type of resolution for well number nine. As we proceed with that well number nine project, we'll start with testing fairly soon. Uh, we would like to reimburse ourselves up to $1.1 million for the construction of well number nine after we issue debt. So on this one, we're not necessarily spending the 1.1 right now. The only thing that's been suggested is to do the testing and then it just gives us the ability if we should so choose to do the well and go through with it all, we've got the ability to make that. So. In this case, it makes sense just to do one resolution instead of multiple to try and, you know, so we don't want to do one resolution to reimburse ourselves right. for the testing. So uh, with that, I would make a motion to approve resolution 1118. We have a motion by Wakefield, second by Clark for reimbursement on well number nine, not to exceed 1.1 million. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Restriction status. And here comes. How come I get all the good stuff? <laughs> uh, water restriction status. Well, update on our water usage over the last seven days. The 13th was at a million. It's dropped consistently up until the 18th, where it was at 716,000. Um, today or yesterday it did go up to 754,000 so I think the people are using conservation pretty well and I think with the well in place watching that uh, run operate I think we could actually go back to green watering restrictions or green schedule whatever you want however you want to say it odd even so that's my recommendation Do you feel more comfortable waiting until the new well or the new pump and motor are in? I don't think we need to. If I've got the authority to go ahead and get the other well pump ordered, motor ordered, they should be able to come and put it in within a few days. So early enough in the uh, week here, we could probably even get it by the end of the month or end of the week, depending on their schedule. My gut tells me that we should wait until the new well is up and running just in case some kind of hiccup happens. Um, I, I had a resident reach out and ask if we had switched um, switched to green yet and uh, I, I told him that we hadn't yet and um, when he asked if, if everything was back and finished and fixed I explained that we're on that temporary pump and it's working really well for us and, and his feedback was well let's just wait. So I think the residents would understand uh, if we did uh, hesitate, but you know, as soon as we can get back to watering, it'd be great. So right now we're kind of riding the graces of the, the good rain. So, um, but that's my feedback. I 
I would recommend and agree with uh, Mr. Wakefield that we should keep it at yellow. I would agree with that. Yep, I'm good with it. I've just had a few com people call and complain, so. So I guess could we, is there a way that we could authorize the immediate change of green once that's complete, if we make a motion for that? So basically we would say, as soon as the new pump and motor are installed and are working efficiently, and then the city staff can publish it just so that we don't have to wait another two weeks? No, we'll, uh, you know, we've got the, the resolution setting up the, the water and restriction program with the red, green, and yellow designations. So once we meet those criteria, we as staff can make those change, that designated change, and we can certainly wait uh, until after the new pump is in place. Yeah, because we're already meeting the requirements yep. to trigger it, so yep. we're going to continue to meet it. So just as staff, then as soon as the light switch is flipped and everybody's happy, then let her rip. And there's nothing wrong with making a motion to that effect, and that makes it easy on staff to say the council passed a motion that once staff has determined it's up and running, that it will automatically be switched to and will provide notice. So you can certainly do that if you want to. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. So I will make a motion that as soon as Well 6 has its permanent pump installed and functioning, staff is authorized to go back to uh, the green stage of watering. Second. We had a motion by Wakefield, second by Bastion, to authorize the staff to go back to the green uh, watering schedule once the pump is installed up and running. I need more discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> I do want to thank the Water Conservation Committee and the Water Development Committee for your efforts. I think that you're getting the message out has really helped. And we'll just continue to keep getting that message out. But to drop down to 700-some thousand gallons is great. So, um, and Raleigh's staff and the chief staff for enforcement, too. All right, do we have anything else to come before the council? Um, I would just update the council that I would expect to get drafts of the new administrative um, ordinances to you this week probably tomorrow or Wednesday morning uh, there had been some discussion on whether as whether the city wanted to have an ordinance on a special election um, our process has been to not have a special election when there's a vacancy um, we can certainly I, I haven't added that I can certainly add that if that's what the council wants me to do in terms of proposing an ordinance within those administrative rules. Uh, I had reached out to various city attorneys to get their feedback on special elections. Everything I received back was very negative in terms of timing. Um, in terms of the, the publication requirements, it effectively eliminates about five months of the year for special elections because of, of when a regular election is. It, it works fine when the vacancy is going to be out there for 10 months. Um, that you have somebody in place, but there was an AG Attorney General's decision out in 2006 that really um, made it clear that it takes about five months out of that process that special elections just are not effective and you can't even do them. So that's number one. Um, and the feedback also was that you're really dealing with a finite amount of time and relative to uh, candidates getting out their platforms and getting the public informed and the media involved, you're really not able to do that very well with the special election was the second feedback I received. Um, the, the third feedback was you don't get very many people coming out to the special election for a very short amount of, of vacancy filling. Uh, and then the, the final feedback that I received from city attorneys that have looked at this issue is Really, in, in the short amount of time that you're trying to fill that position for a mayor, oftentimes, um, in terms of transparency, uh, you're able to address that with having people come before the council and, and kind of state what their plans are or their rationale are. The city council members are the ones who know what issues are really coming up uh, in the next few months, because sometimes you're talking about an appointment as a mayor for two or three months, and it's more of the... If you remember the administrative uh, CEO signing documents, um, 
fulfilling the requirements of what the ordinances are because you set the ordinances and so oftentimes it's the council that makes the appointment knows what is coming up and what experience is needed for a very short amount of time and, and trying to vet that out with candidates that are um, coming in before them and so I didn't receive any comments from city attorneys that really supported the special election just because it's such a small amount of time but if it is something that you want me to as a council draft within the administrative ordinances I certainly can do that um, I haven't done that but that is something that you know we can do otherwise and it nothing has to be decided tonight I'm just throwing it out there because we're not going to be able to use it anyway uh, right now with this mayoral vacancy but that's kind of the feedback I received on special elections so I, I won't be unless otherwise instructed by a majority of the council proposing that uh, within the administrative ordinances that I'm going to send to you so I just wanted to update you on that and then I have an executive session that I need but if you have any questions about that first I'm certainly happy to so just that. real quick on on the special election <coughs> is it a tool that we could have where it could go either way so appointment or special election so right now we do not have the ability for a special election so if we were to put in that into our ordinances we could do a special election or an appointment or is it very clear that once you put in the ordinances it has to be a special election it has to be a special election unless you're dealing with the period of time that um, you can't you know the five months before the normal election in April so you can't even use that process and so you could have it in place but it's really only dealing with seven month period of time um, that you can have it there so you, you can have it there, but you can only use it effectively about seven months of the time. I was one of the people that inquired about the process in general, just being new, just mm -hmm. to staff. And after understanding more of the time restrictions with putting out the publication and the notices and the ordinances and, and then the time to actually have the election and not to mention the expense that would have to be incurred to have the election as well for such a short period of time, I, I would I would not be in favor of doing that I would echo those comments I would not be in favor of it nor would I nor would I okay well hearing I don't have a majority and it's not something you can't otherwise bring up later as well I won't have included in my draft um, that provision and it's something we can certainly talk about when we're looking through the ordinances again and then I have nothing further before I ask for an executive so I don't know if there's any other business if you want to take care of that first and then I'll make a motion or not make a motion but I'll ask for executive session for certain reasons I'll ask somebody to make a motion or any other business come for the council Just a second. so we need to adjourn and go into executive session yeah I'll make a motion to go in executive for session. it would be litigation potential litigation and personnel potential litigation and personnel second. Okay. All those in favor of going into executive session for potential litigation and personnel? And litigation. And lit yeah. litigation. Yeah. Litigation, potential litigation, and personnel. Oh, oh litigation, okay. potential litigation, and personnel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Um,